Perhaps the first obstacle in combating human trafficking is the belief and acceptance that it exists in the United States of America, the land of freedom. In reality, we can all help fight this crime through awareness of the people who live in our community, down to the food we put on our tables. This is how the day begins for hundreds in Immokalee, Florida, a migrant farm community. It's 6 a.m. and they're heading out to pick tomatoes. Now 4,000 members strong, the Coalition of Immokalee Workers, which began as a labor rights organization, soon also became a leader in a national movement to end agricultural slavery. We came across large modern day slavery operations, meaning involving hundreds of workers at a time sometimes where the crew leaders or the bosses would hold workers against their will through using violence or threats of violence. It could include um, guards, armed guards, or guards with cell phones, informants, um, uh, threats to family members, and people were not free to leave. Through the years, the CIW has taken information to police. The resulting collaboration led to more than a thousand workers being freed and their captors prosecuted. In almost all of those cases, law enforcement had been first responders to 911 calls about violence that was occurring in the trafficking operation. And in the course of us looking into it, once workers had contacted us, we would talk to law enforcement and find out that there was opportunities there to identify forced labor and we began working together with law enforcement on the cases. The coalition not only works with law enforcement, but for the first time ever, they're also working with growers, buyers, and consumers. Allies really from everywhere who do not want to be participating in consuming any product of forced labor have uh, encouraged corporations to take responsibility for the conditions in their supply chain meaning the produce being harvested. And they have come to agreements with us at the Coalition of Immokalee Workers. And now we have this, the Coalition of Immokalee Workers, growers, and corporate buyers all working together as partners to put an end to slavery in the agricultural field. The idea is to eliminate acceptance in poor working conditions so slavery cannot take root in the first place. But this crime not only grows in agriculture, nor is it exclusive to adults. The impoverished slums of Guatemala are no stranger to despair, but for one 11-year-old girl who was left homeless, poverty was the least of her concerns. A glimpse of hope came from missionaries who found adoptive parents for her, but this adoption wasn't going to be easy. Well, a man came to me and he said, Pastor Bill, you don't know what I do for a living, but I work in a special operations arena and I can get the girl out of there. And we were totally excited and I called our missionary down there and said, hey man, we can get her out. And he was stunned to silence and I said, what's the matter? He said, a man just left my office. He had put a gun on my desk and he was the slumlord. And he said, I think you're gonna try and get that girl out of here. And he said, let me tell you how it works. If she disappears, one of your kids will disappear. I had to make a decision not to get her out of there. And that's haunted me or us for, you know, six years. And when a girl then is taken into human trafficking, she will be raped 20 to 30 times a day. If you had a, a person you knew that got raped once, a girl at 11 years old, it, it would fry your brain. What about every day, 20 to 30 times? Pastor Bill soon learned that this unimaginable crime was happening right here in his own backyard. He also learned that Florida was one of the top destination states for this crime. Hurt, angry, and frustrated over losing this little girl in Guatemala, this congregation became passionate about saving other victims. Quickly, they partnered with law enforcement. Now, victims after a rescue are brought to the church, given food, shelter, love, and security. The comfort zone of being in this place is so different than being in a holding cell in jail. Here, they are then finally get the idea, I'm not going to jail, I'm not being deported, I'm not in danger, I'm in a church. Not only am I in a church, 
They've given me a backpack with life essentials. There are clothes available and other things available. Uh, maybe I'm out, maybe I'm free. Pathways, as its name implies, helps to change the path for these victims. Through its partners, they also provide free counseling and safe houses for victims as they rebuild their lives. I, I love that the world's now getting educated and you can go to seminars and you come away from the seminar educated and mad, but somebody's got to do something. Somebody's got to help law enforcement. They don't have counselors. They don't have safe houses. They don't have things that churches do. This is why non-governmental organizations or NGOs like churches are crucial when it comes to supporting law enforcement in the fight against human trafficking before and after a rescue.